Hi, this is Ali Arango, and today I would like to show you how to model a simple axe inside of Blender 2.77. So let's get started. Okay, if this is your first time in Blender, I recommend you go to File, User Preferences, go to Input, and then choose Select with left click. Blender's default select is with right click, and this may confuse you if you're coming from Adobe programs or other 3D programs. Okay, when you first come into Blender, you start off in object mode, which you can see right here. Uh, you can use this navigation tab to navigate your view. As a matter of fact, if I click here, which is file, and then go to user preferences, and then click add-ons, you make sure you have a check mark next to 3D view colon 3D navigation. Then you'll have this tab right here. And these uh, buttons here just allow you to easily manipulate your view. Uh, you also can hold the middle mouse button to also manipulate your view. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we have our default cube right here. We're going to press X. We're then going to delete the cube. We're then going to press and hold shift, then press A. And then we're going to go from mesh to cylinder. When the cylinder comes in, you want to look directly over to your left. And you'll see it says vertices right here, 32. You want to click here and uh, type in 6. And then I'll just hit enter to lock that in. Okay, and something else you can do is where it says cap fill right here, ingon. Just click here and then change this to nothing. Okay, here we're in object mode. We're going to do most of our work in edit mode. So we can uh, click here and see the different modes in Blender. We're going to click edit mode to go into edit mode. Okay, what we're going to do now is click here to go to front view. I'm then going to press S to scale on the Z axis. Like this, see that line right there? That's a preview line showing us how we're going to scale. And then I'm going to left click to lock that scale in. Right here, we can select vertices, edges, and faces. We'll be manipulating our model by pushing, pulling, you know, these different uh, vertices, edges, and faces. So right now, what I want you to do is to press A to deselect. You're then going to click here to go to face select. Okay, currently we're in front perspective mode. You can look right here and see it says front perspective. Perspective mode is kind of like more of a 3D view viewport or, or viewpoint, I should say. We want to have like almost like a, a blueprint uh, view that we're looking at. So we can do that by clicking right here where this says view perspect slash ortho, which stands for perspective slash orthographic. So we'll click here. Then we click there. We can see now we're in front orthographic mode. Okay, with this front orthographic mode, if you look here, you can kind of see like a, a grid kind of like here. Uh, this is the mode we want to be into. It just makes things easier as far as splitting this geometry. And what we want to do is to delete half of this geometry and then uh, replace it with a mirror modifier. And what that will allow us to do is to essentially do half the amount of work that we normally would do. So what we're going to do is press the Z key and then select wireframe. Okay, now what we're going to do with face select on, we're going to hover our mouse right here. We're going to press B for box select. We're going to left click and drag a little bit past the center line right there. We're going to let go. We're then going to press X to bring up our delete menu. We're then going to choose faces to delete. Okay, we're about to put a mirror modifier on this mesh. This little orange dot right here is your uh, origin point. This dot is very important because for the mirror modifier to work correctly, you need this origin dot to be directly in the center of your mesh, which it is here. So what we're going to do now is hover here. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and drag to the side. I'm going to click on what looks like a wrench. This is our modifier button. I'm then going to click here and then select mirror to put a mirror modifier on this mesh. These are the options for our mirror modifier. We want to click here, which this word says clipping. If I hover here and pull this out, you can see that. And what this does is this keeps uh, this geometry from pulling apart from this virtual, virtual geometry right there. I'm going to click here to make the virtual geometry look like the actual geometry. All you really need to know about the mirror modifier is it essentially, like I had mentioned before, allows you to do... Uh, half of the work you normally would have to do. Okay, what we're going to do now is press Z and then select Solid. To go back to Solid View, I'm going to hold them in the mouse button to rotate the view. We're on Face Select, which is good. We're going to click here. We're then going to press E to extrude. I'm going to left click the lock in. 
And what I'm going to do now is click here to go back to front view. And then going to pull out to the side about like that. Okay, what we're going to do now is press S to scale on the Z axis about like this. And then left click to lock that in. Okay, what we're going to do now is press E to extrude, left click to lock that in, and we're going to pull out to the side like that. Okay, what we're going to do now is press S to scale on the Z axis like this, and then left click to lock that in. Okay, what we're going to do now is press E to extrude, left click to lock that in. And say when we press E to extrude, we're creating new geometry, and then we're just pulling that geometry out. Anyway, I'm going to pull this out like this. Then I'm going to press S to scale on the Z axis like that. Then I'm going to left click to lock that in. Okay, now I'm going to press E to extrude one more time as far as working on this blade. And then left click to lock that in and then pull this to the side like that. Then I'm going to press S to scale on the Z axis like that. Then uh, eh, a little bit more. Then I'll left click to lock that in. Okay, now I'm going to hold down control, then hold the middle mouse button and then pull back. Okay, what you're going to do now is press A to deselect. You're going to hover your mouse right here. You're going to hold control. Then while holding control, press R. This brings up your uh, loop cut preview, which you can see right there. If I roll the mouse wheel, I can add another loop cut. I can also use the page up key. I'm going to press the page up key once. Then I'm going to press the page up key one more time for a third uh, loop cut. I'm then going to right click once to lock that in. I'm then going to left click a second time to totally lock that in and then I'm going to press A to deselect okay what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press Z and then select wireframe I'm then going to select vertice select I'm then going to press B and select the vertice here I'm then going to hover here then press B and then select this vertice here okay now I'm just going to take the manipulator and just pull out about like that. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to press B for box select and select this vertice here and then pull out like that. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold down control. Then I'm going to put my mouse about here. I'm going to, while holding control, which I'm still doing now, I'm holding the right mouse button. Now I'm drawing a lasso select around these. What looks like two vertices is actually four vertices there. I'm going to hover my mouse right here. I'm going to hold down control, then hold down the right mouse button, then draw a lasso select right here. So now we have what looks like four vertices. It's actually eight vertices. If I hold the middle mouse button, you can see what's actually going on right there. I'm going to click right here to go back to front view. Okay, and with those vertices selected, what we're going to, what we're going to do is press S to scale on the Z axis like this, and then uh, left click to lock that in. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is hover my mouse right here. I'm going to press uh, B for box select. I'm going to grab these vertices right here, pull out to the side like that, then press A to deselect. I'm then going to hover here, press B, pull out to the side like that. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover here. I'm going to press B, grab these, uh, what looks like three vertices, they're actually six. I'm going to pull to the side like that, press A to deselect. Hover here, then press B, then grab this vertice right here, pull to the side like that, then press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is press Z and then select solid mode. I'm now going to hold the middle mouse button to turn to the side. I'm going to hover my mouse right here. I'm then going to hold control and then while holding control, press R. I'm then going to move my mouse until the loop uh, cut tool preview goes to where I want it to go, which is what you see there. I'm going to left click once to lock it in then left click a second time to totally lock that loop cut in okay now i'm going to press a to deselect i'm then going to go to edge select right here so i'm going to click here hold shift and while holding shift i am clicking right here so now i'm going to hold them in a mouse button to turn towards the side just a little bit more i'm going to take the manipulator and just pull out just slightly and then i'm going to press a to deselect Okay, I want to show you another add-on uh, that's very useful. I'm going to go to File, and then User Preferences, then go to Add-ons, and then going to hover my mouse, or not hover, I'm left-clicking and dragging down. See right here it says uh, Mesh colon Loop Tools. You want to put a check mark right next to this. 
Okay, one thing I want to show you is uh, a Blender add-on called uh, Loop Tools. Uh, when I say add-ons, I am not saying something that I added on to Blender. I have the default version of Blender 2.77, so if you have one of the newer versions of Blender, you have this add-on. So I'm going to go to File, User Preferences, go to Add-ons. I'm going to scroll down about halfway. And see right here where it says uh, Mesh colon Loop Tools. You want to make sure you have a check mark right there. Okay, so what you want to do is have Edge Select selected. Then you're going to hold Alt and then select this edge right here. Now by holding Alt, I was able to select this entire edge right here, right? And by having that add-on activated, when I press W to open up our Specials menu, you can see this Loop Tools option right here. Then we can go here and select Circle. So I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. Then with Edge Select Still 1, I'm going to hold Alt, then select here. I'm then going to press W to open our Specials menu. I'm then going to go to Loop Tools, and then I'm going to select Circle again. Okay, this uh, Loop Tools add-on, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. It makes things faster. I'm going to press A to deselect. It makes things faster, but it's not necessary. You can manually push and pull the vertices to make you know, this circular shape out of that edge that you see right there. The loop tools just makes things a lot quicker and easier. Okay, what we're going to do now is click here to go to vertices select, select, bah, <laughs> vertices select. I'm going to click here. I'm going to push this in. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button. Click here. Push that in some. Hold the middle mouse button just to take a look. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I want to make this middle part bigger here. And uh, what we can do is we can press A to select everything. And see, I'm about to pull right here using this manipulator, right? See this part right here? You might think if you're new that we have to, you know, go here and scale this up. However, we can scale this up another way. And what that is, is this is the actual geometry. This is like the virtual geometry from, from the mirror modifier, right? This clipping option here keeps this actual geometry from pulling apart from the virtual geometry so what we can do in blender is take advantage of that and when i pull on this geometry here the clipping will keep this geometry attached so long story short it looks like this gets bigger and it does get bigger so anyway i'm, I'm just going to pull to the side and you can see that this area actually you know gets bigger wider however you want to put it Okay, so what we're going to do now is press A to deselect. I'm going to go to Edge Select. I'm going to hold Alt and then select right here. I'm then going to press E to extrude. Left click to lock in. When I press E to extrude, I made new geometry right here. Because I have that new geometry, I can take the manipulator and pull out like this. I'm then going to press E to extrude. Left click to lock in. I just made new geometry again. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button. You can see what's going on. I'm going to press S to scale. To scale in some. I'm going to take advantage of that mirror modifier and just push in something like that. I'm then going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to pull up some like this. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn back again. I'm then going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in, S to scale in again. Then I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to pull up some like that. Okay, now I'm going to press S to scale, like this, press S to scale a little bit more, press S to scale a little bit more, then I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in, I'll pull that geometry up, and I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in, I'm going to press S to scale in some, pull that geometry up there, push it in a little bit towards itself. It being the geometry that I'm talking about, I'm going to click here to temporarily hide the virtual geometry. I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm going to press and hold shift. Then while holding shift, I'm going to press B, then draw a zoom box for right here. And now uh, what I'm going to do is press F to fill that area right there. Then I'm going to click this eye to turn the mirror modifier back on. I'm going to then hold control, then hold the middle mouse button to zoom back some. Then I'm going to press A to deselect, and I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to pan the view. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm then going to hold Alt, then select this edge right here. I'm then going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. 
hold them in a mouse button, rotate the view. I'm going to push down some like that, and I'm going to press S to scale, left click the lock in, hold them in a mouse button to just take a look. So I rotated the view by holding the middle mouse button. Now I'm going to press E to extrude, left click the lock in, S to scale. I'm just pushing in some there. Now I'm going to press E to extrude, left click the lock in, holding the middle mouse button. Now I'm going to take the manipulator and push out that geometry that we just made. Okay, I'm going to hold control, then hold the middle mouse button to, to uh, zoom back. And then I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I'm going to push down some. Then I'm going to press S to scale out some like that. Then left click to lock that in. Then I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. Push this down some like that. I'm going to then hold control, then hold the middle mouse button to zoom back some. Okay, what I'm going to do now is press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I'm going to press S to scale. Push down some. I'll press S to scale again. Then I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. Like that. And then I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I'll push down again like that. Then I'll press S to scale to scale this in some like that. Then left click to lock in. Okay, I'm going to hold Shift and the middle mouse button to pan up. I'm then going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm then going to press F to fill that area right there. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll click here to go to front view, and now we have our basic axe. So what I recommend you do is click here, then go to object mode. With your axe selected, press and hold shift, then press D, pull to the side. I pull to the side just so I know that the object that I am trying to duplicate is duplicated. I'm then going to right click to get that to jump back into place. I'm then going to press the M key, and this brings up our move to layer option. We're currently on this layer. We want to move it to this layer, so I'm going to left click. So now when you look here, here's the, op the layer that we're on, and here is the uh, layer that our duplicate axe is on. Okay, and I actually recommend you do that two more times, so we'll click here. We'll press and hold shift, then press D, move to the side, right click, get that to jump back into place. Press M to bring up our move to layer, and then select here. So now we'll click here again. We'll press and hold shift, then press D. We just duplicated this object. We pull to the side just for the purpose of knowing that the object is duplicated. We right click to get it to jump right back into place. We then press M to bring up our move to layer option. And then we choose the layer that we want. And then you can see all of our copies of this axe on these additional layers. Okay, and with those copies, this is where I think things get fun. We have the basic shape of this axe, and now we can come in and, you know, modify things fairly uh, easily. So we're on this layer right here. We'll click right here. Then we'll click here to go from object mode back to edit mode. Okay, when I look at this version of the axe, what I want to do is make these blades bigger. So I'm going to change this from edge select to face select. I'm then going to press Z. I'm then going to go to wireframe. I'm then going to hold down control, then hold down the right mouse button, then draw a lasso select around this geometry right here. I'm then going to hold down Alt and then hold S and then pull down slightly. Then left click to lock that in. And now these blades are bigger. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Now I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm going to press B for box select. I'm going to drag down and select this geometry here. I'm then going to press S to scale on the Z axis. Scale that down some, then I'll pull this up just slightly because I'm thinking this is, I'm thinking of this as being more a one-handed weapon. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to press Z and then select solid for our view type. Okay, I would like to add some detail here. So I'm going to hover here. I'm going to press, press and hold shift and press B, draw a zoom box here. Make sure I'm on face select. I'm going to hold alt and then I'm going to select this edge right here. Now what I'm going to do is press E to extrude, left click the lock in. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. This is all new geometry right now. So I'm going to hold alt, then press S. I'll pull down some, and that'll scale out. Then I'll left click to lock that in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily turn off clipping. That's because I want these two, these faces to be all separate. You'll see what I mean in a moment, I hope. If I don't turn on clipping when I go to do what I'm about to show you, 
these two faces would try to stay together. However, because clipping is turned off, they won't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and change our pivot point from Blender's default pivot point, which is the medium point, to individual origins. I'm then going to hold Alt, and then while holding Alt, press E. And then that brings up our extrude menu. I'm then going to choose individual faces. I'm then going to left click to lock that in. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to temporarily turn off clipping because I don't want this geometry trying to stay connected to that geometry. I'm then going to change our pivot point from Blender's default pivot point, which is the medium point, to individual origins. I'm then going to pr press and hold Alt. Then while holding Alt, press E. This brings up our extrude menu. I'm then going to choose individual faces. I'm then going to left click to lock that in. I'm then going to press S to scale. So I'm going to scale down like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press W and then I am going to select subdivide. Now with that done, I'm going to press W again, which brings up our specials menu. I'm then going to go to loop tools and select circle. Then I'm going to left click and I was already locked in. Now I'm going to press E2 extrude and you can see the extrusion lines right there. I'm just going to ride those extrusion lines out like this. Then I'm going to left click to lock that in. I'm then going to press E2 extrude, left click to lock in. I'm going to press S to scale down a little bit more. And then I'm going to press E to extrude and ride that extrusion out again like that. Then left click to lock that in. Then I'm going to press S to scale down some more. Then I'm going to left click to lock that in. Then press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is hold down control, then hold the middle mouse button to zoom back. I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan down. Then I'm going to hover my mouse right here. I'm then going to Press and hold control, then press R, then left click to put that loop cut in because I only left click one time, I can still move it. So I'm going to pull that down like that. I'm going to press and hold control, then press R to put another loop cut in, do the same thing again. And I'm just going to keep doing this because I want uh, some grip detail in here. Okay, and I think that'll be good. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to press and hold control, then press R to put one more loop cut in. Then I'm going to left click to lock in. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to click here to go to face select. I'm then going to hold shift, and then while holding shift, press B. I'm going to draw a zoom box right here. I'm then going to hold shift and then alt. So I'm holding shift and alt right now. I'm going to click here, here, here as well as here. Okay, what we're going to do now is click here to turn clipping back on. And then with these faces selected, we're going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. Then we're going to hold down, Alt, and then while holding, Alt, press S, and then drag down some. And then left click to lock that in. Then I'm going to hold the middle mouse button. So this brought things out on the side, but not this way like I want. So I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis get that. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, what we're going to do now is hold control and hold the middle mouse button, then pull back to zoom back. And then I'm going to click here to go to front view. I'm then going to hold control, then hold the middle mouse button, zoom back some more. Now I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan the view. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to vertices select. We're then going to press Z, then go to wireframe mode. I put my mouse about here. I'm going to hold down control and then hold the right mouse button down. Then I'm going to draw a lasso select around this geometry right here. And then with that geometry selected, I'm just going to pull to the side some like that. And I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to press Z and then go back to uh, solid view. Okay, now what we're going to do is press and hold sh shift. Then while holding shift, press B. I'm then going to draw a zoom box right here. I'm then going to go to face select. I'm then going to press C for paint select and then select these faces right here. I'm then going to right click to get out of paint select. Okay, what I'm going to do now is press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I'm then going to press S to scale like that. I'm then going to left click to lock that scale in. Okay, now I'm going to go to edge select. I'm going to Click here to temporarily take away the manipulator. I'm going to select here, then hold shift, and then select here, as well as here. I'm still holding shift, 
and then I am also selecting here while holding shift. Okay, with those edges selected there, what we're going to do is press S to scale on the Z axis. Like that. Then left click to lock that in. Okay, now I'm going to press A to deselect. We're still on edge select, so I'm going to hold shift and select here, 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 as well as here. Okay, and with those edges selected, I'm going to press S to scale on the Z axis just slightly. Then I'm going to left click to lock that scale in. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to click here to go to face select. I'm going to put my mouse right about here. I'm going to press C for paint select. You can actually use the number uh, keypad buttons of minus and plus to uh, decrease as well as increase your paint select. You can also roll your mouse wheel. So I'm going to just paint select this area, these you know, faces of geometry right here. I'm then going to right click to get out of paint select. I'm then going to press X to bring up the delete menu. I'm then going to choose faces to delete. Okay, so what I want is I want there to be a hole going through here, you know, a triangular shaped hole. So when I hold them in a mouse button, you can see that the work that I did on the other side doesn't translate to this side. So I'm going to hold them in a mouse button and then turn back towards the front. Okay, and this is actually uh, pretty interesting. I'm going to hold control and hold them in a mouse button to zoom back. I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to uh, pan to the side. Okay, this grid floor. Uh, it's kind of distracting me, so I'm going to press N to bring up the properties panel. I'm going to then scroll down to where it says display. I'm going to click here and then take this uh, check mark away next to grid floor. Now you can see the grid floor is not there. So I'm going to press N to take the properties panel away. Okay, uh, we have a mirror modifier on here, which is, you know, you can see your options right here. So the work that we do on this side is translated to this side. Wouldn't it be nice if the work we did in the front could be translated to the back of this axe? Well, we can do that. We can do it fairly easily as well. Okay, when I click front view, remember this origin point I told you about? Because we started off with this origin point here, we were able to easily, you know, set up the mirror modifier here, right? Well, when we click here, you notice how the origin point is directly here between this front and this back. So take a while to guess what we're going to do. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to hold down control then hold the middle mouse button to pull back some. I'm going to press and hold shift and hold the middle mouse button to pan up some. We're then going to press Z and then select wireframe. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go to vertices select. Then we're going to press B for box select. We're going to try to get you know a little bit past that center line come straight down and we got all of this looks right this here looks off so what we can do is uh, I'm gonna hold shift and while holding shift press B I'm gonna then draw a zoom box right here and then what we can do is a uh, we're gonna press C for paint select now when we hold the middle mouse button we can actually deselect geometry so I'm just holding the middle mouse button and what we're trying to do is just get rid of this geometry that's past that center line I'm gonna right click to get out of paint select so what we're gonna do is move our mouse around here then I'm gonna hold shift and hold the middle mouse button down then pan up so now we can see that right there so I'm gonna press C for paint select I'm now gonna hold the middle mouse button to to take away that geometry right there and then I'm going to right click to get out of paint select. Now I'm going to hold shift and then the mouse button to pan up. And uh, it looks good now. So I'm going to hold control, then hold shift and then the mouse button to pan. And what looks good is now we have this, you know, totally on this side, you know, right there. So I'm going to actually go to face select. Then I'm going to press X to bring up our delete menu. Then I'm going to choose faces to delete. Okay, I'm going to go back to vertices select. We can see. A little bit of you know geometry here so I'm gonna press C for paint select I'm gonna click there press X to get out of paint select and press X to bring up our delete menu I'm then gonna choose vertices to delete there and right here I'm gonna press C 
select right there right click to get out of uh, paint select then press X to bring up our delete menu then choose vertices to deselect or not deselect but vertices to delete that geometry there I'm going to press C for paint select here couldn't tell if that was the light or it looks good so I'm going to right click to get out of paint select okay now that we have the whole back part gone as far as our geometry right now this is our mirror modifier we have uh we're mirroring on the x-axis well we can click this y or just put a check mark next to this y and now we activate the mirror modifier on the x-axis which is going across and going from front to back which is a uh, very cool okay so now i'm going to press z then go to solid view i'm then going to click here to go to front view now I'm going to press and hold shift then press B then draw a zoom box right here. See that hole right there? We have the mirror modifier on so this is actually very easy to deal with. So we're going to click here because we want the hole we just don't want this empty geometry here. So what we're going to do is hold alt with edge select on select here and I selected here but there's also the mirror there right? So now what we're going to do is press E to extrude left click to lock in to create new geometry. We're going to click here to bring our manipulator back we have new geometry right here so I'm gonna hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view now I'm gonna push this edge which isn't highlight doesn't look like it's highlighted towards itself and now we have if you look now this nice you know filled in uh, geometry there so I'm gonna press A to deselect I'm gonna press A to select everything because typically when you take geometry like this and you push it towards itself you'll have something called doubles and that's when you have geometry on top of other geometry and it's fairly easy to deal with you can select everything then press W's not W press W that brings up your specials menu then you can choose that uh, remove doubles and okay there wasn't any but if there were it would have taken the vertices away right there so I'm gonna press A to then deselect Okay, now I'm going to hold control, then hold my middle mouse button to zoom back. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. We have edge select still once. I'm going to click here. I'm going to hold shift. Still holding shift as I click right here. And I'm holding the middle mouse button. And now I'm going to push towards the mirror modifier here. Like that. Now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button. And push back a little here. I think I'm going to press S to scale a little. Then I'm going to left click to lock that in. Now I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now that option to mirror from front to back is cool. However, uh, I find it a little problematic as far as I'm not used to dealing with it. I'm used to dealing with a mirror modifier being here and here. So what we can do is to still keep this. What we can do is uh, we can actually click here, right? So I unclicked the check mark next to this X for our mirror modifier there. So now we just have the mirror modifier from front to back. So what we can do is click here, then go to object mode, then click here to apply the mirror modifier. So now this is actually the geometry, right? However, we still have our origin point right there. Matter of fact, if I click right here, you can see it's still perfectly positioned. So now we can just, you know, click here and then click mirror. And now we have our mirror modifier right back again. Then I'll click here to go back to edit mode again. And then we'll just return on clipping and then click here. So now we're pretty much right back to where we were uh, before we put the extra mirror modifier on. However, now we're just dealing with the, you know, the, the common use of how I use the mirror modifier uh, as far as, you know, having the virtual geometry on this side and the actual geometry on this side. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate uh, the view towards us. We have edge select on, which is good. I'm going to hold alt, and I'm going to select this edge. Then I'm going to press F to fill. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now I'm going to click here to go back to front view. Then I'm going to hold down control, then hold the middle mouse button to zoom back. Now I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan. So we're pretty much uh, good for our first axe as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to click here and then change the pivot point from individual origins back to Blender's default pivot point, which is the medium point. Now I'm going to click here and then go to object mode. 
Okay, if you look here, you can see we're on this layer. Now we're going to click here. So we're right back to the axe that we started with. I'm going to click on here. And then now that I have this selected, I'm going to click here to go into this axis edit mode. Okay, what we're going to do with this axis, I, I was thinking of this as being like a two handed long uh, handle axe. So I'm going to hold down control, then hold the minimum mouse button to zoom back some. I'm going to hold shift and minimum mouse button to pan up. So what I'm going to do is press Z, then go to wireframe. I'm going to hover my mouse here. Then I'm going to press B for box select. Select this bottom part right here and drag this down to about there. And then with this uh, part selected, I'm also going to press S to scale on the Z axis to make that longer as well. Then I'm going to left click to lock that in. And I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now I'm going to press Z to go back to solid mode. And I'm pretty much, you know, good for variation for that. You know, quick as simple as that was. So I'm going to click here, then go back to object mode. So we're currently on this layer. Now I'm going to click here to go to this layer and this particular axe. We're going to click here. Then we're going to click here and then go to edit mode for this axe. Okay, now for this axe, what I want to do is actually click here to go back to object mode. I'm going to go to the mirror modifier and then click apply to apply the mirror modifier. Now I'm going to click here, then go back to edit mode. Okay, now I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm going to press and hold shift and press B. I'm then going to draw a zoom box right here. And then I'm going to press Z, then go to wireframe. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go to here to go to Versi Select. I'm going to hover my mouse about here. I'm going to hold down Control, then hold the right mouse button down, then draw a lasso select around this geometry right here. I'm then going to click here to go back to Face Select. Okay, now I'm going to press X to bring up our Delete menu. I'm then going to choose Faces to Delete. Okay, now I'm going to go back to vertices select again. I'm going to put my mouse about here. I'm then going to hold control, then hold the right mouse button down. Then I'm going to draw a lasso select around these vertices right here. Okay, now I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis zero to flatten that geometry out right there. Then I'm going to left click to lock that in. Okay, what we're going to do now is press Z, then go back to solid view. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. See this right here, what we're going to do now is press and hold control, then press F. That brings up our faces menu. We're then going to choose grid fill. What grid fill does is basically if we had used F to feel like if you have it, the edge selected around something and you press F, typically Blender will fill the area in for you. However, this would have been one face. With grid fill, basically what Blender does is it lines uh, it fills the area but it also fills it up with uh, vertices edges and faces that match the geometry basically leading up to it okay so we're going to hold the middle mouse button here then we're going to press e to extrude i'm going to press s to scale like this I'm going to pull out some i'm going to hold the middle mouse button to see how it looks i'm going to press s to scale on the y axis slightly like that i'm going to then left click to lock in. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn back towards the front. I'm going to pull out a little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to press E to extrude. Left click to lock in. I'm going to pull out like this. Okay, now I'm going to press S to scale in the Z axis like that. And then left click to lock in. Okay, now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to then press A to deselect. Then I'm going to hover my mouse here. I'm then going to hold down control. While holding control, press R. Then left click to lock in. Left click a second time to totally lock in. Now I'm going to hover here. I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold down control, then press R. Then left click once to lock in. Left click a second time to totally lock in. Then press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is hold shift and while holding shift press B, I'm then going to draw a zoom box right here. I'm then going to go to face select. I'm going to click here, hold shift, and then click here. I'm then going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in, S to scale. I'm then going to press S to scale on the Y axis, some like that. Then I'm going to 
left click to lock in there. Okay, and with this geometry selected, I am going to use another option to make this look more circular, that geometry. And what that is, is I'm going to hold down Shift, then hold down Alt, then press S, and then left click to lock in. And what that is, is that is the two sphere uh, command in Blender. As a matter of fact, if you press the space bar, search, and then push a uh, two, you can see it right there, two sphere, uh, Shift, Alt, S. So, Okay, um... Uh, with that selected, I'm going to hold them in a mouse button to turn to the side, and then I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I'm going to pull this out some. Then I'm going to press S to scale down like that. Then I'm going to left click to lock that in. Okay, we're going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold them in a mouse button to rotate the view. With face select still on, I'm going to hold shift. Then I'm going to click here as well as here. I'm then going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I'm going to press S to scale down some. And then I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis, something like that. I'm then going to hold Shift, then Alt. And then I'm, so I'm holding Shift as well as Alt right now. Now I'm pressing S. Then I'm going to left click to lock that in. Now I'm holding them in a mouse button to just get a better view for us to pull out the shape. So I'm going to press E to extrude again. Left click to lock in. Pull this out here. Then press S to scale down like that. Okay, now I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hold them in the mouse button, rotate the view. I'm going to click here, hold shift. While holding shift, click here. Then I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in, press S to scale. Then I'm going to press S to scale on the Y axis like this. I'm then going to hold down shift. While holding shift, press alt. And then while holding shift as well as alt, press S. Then left click to lock that in. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm then going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I'm going to pull out some. Then I'm going to press S to scale in some. Then I'm going to left click to lock that in. And I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and take a look. And I'm fine with that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is click here to go to front view. I'm then going to hold control, hold the middle mouse button to zoom back. So now we have yet another variation right there. So then I'm going to click here, then go to object mode. Now I'm going to click on this layer for this version of our axe. I'm going to click here. Then I'm going to click here and then go to edit mode. Okay, actually for this axe, we're going to click here and then go back to object mode as well. We're going to click here and then apply the mirror modifier. We'll then uh, click here and then come back to edit mode again. Okay, so what we're going to do is press Z, then go to wireframe mode. Uh, we're going to, let's go to vertices select. We're going to hold down control, then hold down the right mouse button. We're going to select all of this right here. Now I'm going to click here to go to face select. Okay, now we're going to press uh, X to bring up our delete menu. We'll then choose faces to delete. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to vertices select. I'm going to hold down control, then hold down the right mouse button, then draw a lasso select around off this geometry right here. Then I'm going to press S to scale, then left click to lock that in. Pull this over like this. Basically trying to get this, you know, somewhat lined up there. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, what we're going to do now is press Z, then go to Solid uh, View. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view towards us. I'm going to hover my mouse here, and I'm going to hold Shift. Then while holding Shift, press B. Draw a zoom box right here. I'm going to hold Shift and the middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view slightly. I'm going to hold Control and the middle mouse button to zoom back just a little bit. Okay, and what we want to do is fill in this geometry right here. Best tool for the job, I think, is grid fill again. So what we're going to do is go to uh, Edge Select. We're going to hold Alt, select right here. So now I'm holding Alt. Now while holding Alt, I'm now holding Shift. So I'm holding Alt and Shift and then clicking here. So now we have the edge going all around here. So with that done, we're going to hold down Control. Then while holding Control, press the F key. 
This brings up our faces menu. We're then going to choose grid fill. Okay, and as you can see, the grid fill, it looks, you know, strange. Sometimes grid fill needs a little help. If you look over to your left, you can see the grid fill options. I know from previously uh, working with this geometry that if I take this up to a span of six and then take the offset up to five, then things will look good. So with that done, we're going to press A to deselect. Okay, what we're going to do now is click here to go back to front view. We're going to hold down control, then hold the middle mouse button to zoom back. I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hold down control and the middle mouse button to zoom back some more. I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to pan up some. Okay, what we're going to do now is press Z, then go to wireframe mode. We're going to click here to go to vertice select. Now we're going to hold down control, then uh, hold the middle mouse button to draw a lasso select. I don't know if this geometry right here. We're then going to press uh, S to scale on the Z axis like this. Take that up to about there, then left click to lock in. Okay, and now I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm now going to press B for box select and grab right here. Pull this up some like that. Push it back some like that. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now I'm going to hover my mouse right here. I'm going to hold down control. Then while holding control, press R. Then I want to loop cut right here. So I'm going to left click to lock that in. Then left click a second time to totally lock that in. Okay, now I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm then going to hover my mouse right here. Then I'm going to press B for box select. Select right here. Then pull this this way like that. And then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now I'm going to hover my mouse right here. I'm going to hold down control. Then while holding control, press R to put another loop cut in. I'm then going to left click to lock that in. Then left click again to totally lock that in. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press B for box select. I'm going to select here. Pull this over some like that. I'm going to press A to deselect. Then I'm going to press B for box select again. Push this up some like that. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is hover my mouse here, press B for box select, pull this out some there, I'm going to press A to deselect, I'm going to hover my mouse here, and I'm going to press uh, B for box select, pull out some here, I'm going to press A to deselect, I'm going to press B for box select, pull this out some here, I'm at Press B for box select, pull this out some here. Press A to deselect. Press B for box select, pull this forward some right there. Press A to deselect. Then I'm going to press B for box select and pull this forward some like that. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is hover my mouse here, then press and hold control, then press R to put a loop cut in. And I'm then going to left click one time to lock in. Left click a second time to totally lock in. I'm then going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover my mouse right here. Then press B for box select and push this in up a little bit like that. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is uh, hold down control, then hold the right mouse button down, then draw a lasso select around all this geometry right here. I'm then going to press S to scale on the X axis like this, and then left click to lock that in. I'm going to push this in just a little bit, and then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now I'm going to hold down control, then hold the right mouse button down. Then I am going to draw a lasso select around this geometry right here. And then I'm going to press S to scale on the Z axis like this. Push that down a little bit. Then I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis some. I'm going to Pull that over a little. Now I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, what I'm going to do now is hover my mouse here. I'm going to press and hold shift, then press B. I'm then going to draw a zoom box right here. I'm then going to press Z and then go to solid view. I'm now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm then going to go to face select. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click here to temporarily take away the manipulator. Now I'm holding shift to Select that second face right there. 
Okay, now I'm going to click here to go back to front view. I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. I'm going to click here to bring back my manipulator. Take this up like this. Okay, I'm going to press A to deselect. I'm going to hover my mouse right here. I'm going to hold down control, then press R, then left click to lock that in. Left click a second time to totally lock that in. Okay, what we're going to do now is press A to deselect. I'm going to press Z, then go to wireframe mode. We're going to click here to go to vertices select. We're going to press B for box select. We're going to pull up here like that. And then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now I'm going to hover here, then press B for box select, select here, push this out some like that. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. I'll press B for box select again, grab here, pull up some like that. I'll then press A to deselect. Okay, now we'll press and hold shift, then press and hold the middle mouse button to pan the view. Now I'm going to press Z, then select solid to go back to solid view. I'm then going to hold the middle mouse button. I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to uh, press C for paint select and paint right here. I'm going to right click get out of paint select. And I'm going to press S to scale like this. I'm going to press S to scale again like that. Okay, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to take a look. I'm going to pull up some like this. I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis, some like that. I'm going to hold them in a mouse button to rotate the view back towards us. I'm then going to press S to scale on the Y axis to scale like that. Then I'm going to left click to lock in. Okay, I'm going to click here to go back to front view. I'm now going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. To bring this up like this. I'm going to hold control and hold them in a mouse button to zoom back some. I'm now going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. To bring this up more like that. Now I'm going to press uh, S to scale like this hold them in a mouse button to take a look I'm then going to press A to deselect okay I'm going to go to edge select I'm going to hold alt then select this edge right here now I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis like that then I'm going to press A to deselect and I'm going to hold alt then select here now I'm going to press S to scale on the X axis like that then I'm going to press A to deselect okay what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to hold the middle mouse button I'm going to go to face select I'm going to press and hold shift then press B to draw a zoom box to zoom in here I'm going to hold the middle mouse button rotate the view I'm going to click here then hold shift then click here I'm going to then hold control and the middle mouse button to zoom back some. I'm now going to hold the middle mouse button to turn to the side. Then I'm going to press E to extrude. I'm going to ride that extrusion right out. And then I'm going to left click to lock that in. Okay, what I'm going to do now is press S to scale. Then left click to lock in. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm going to click here to temporarily turn off the uh, manipulator. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate the view. I'm going to click here, then hold shift, and then click here as well. And then I'm going to click here to go back to front view. I'm then going to press E to extrude. Like that. And then I'm going to left click to lock in. Then I'm going to press S to scale. Like that. Then I'll press A to deselect. Okay, what we're going to do now is hold control as well as holding the middle mouse button and zoom back. We're then going to press C for paint select. We're going to paint this whole area right here. Then I'm going to right click to get out of paint select. Okay, so what we're going to do now is press E to extrude, left click to lock in, then press S to scale. Out like that, then left click to lock that in. Okay, what I'm going to do now is click here to turn the manipulator back on. Now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn towards the side. And then I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in. Then I'm going to pull in just slightly. Now I'm going to press S to scale in some like that. Then I'm going to left click to lock that in. Then I'm going to press A to deselect. Okay, now I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn the view more towards us. I'm going to
going to hover my mouse right here. I'm then going to press C for paint select. I'm going to paint select this whole area right here. Then I'm going to right click, get out of paint select. Okay, I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in, then S to scale, like that. Then I'm going to left click to lock in, then I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn towards the side. Then I'm going to press E to extrude, left click to lock in, pull in just slightly, then press S to scale, then press A to deselect, and I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn the other way. I'm then going to press C for paint select, I'm going to paint all of this right here, and then I'm going to right click gather paint select i'm going to press e to extrude left click to lock in press s to scale like that then i'm going to left click to lock in now i'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn the view so we can see ourselves pushing in now i'm going to press e to extrude left click to lock in oops he almost grabbed the wrong axis now i'm going to pull in a little bit like that hold the middle mouse button rotate the view now i'm going to press s to scale a little bit like that now i'm going to press a to deselect Okay, now I'm going to hold control, then hold the middle mouse button to zoom back. Now I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to pan up. Now I'm going to click here and then go to object mode, and I'm good for that one. Okay, of all of the versions of the simple axe that we've made, we haven't put a subdivision surface on any of them. So I'm going to click here to go back to this layer. Then I'm going to click here. I'm going to click front. So this is, you know, totally on the front view. Then I'm going to click here to change from object mode to edit mode okay if you're not familiar what a subdivision surface is long story short it's a way of adding geometry to your model in a way that makes certain areas of your model or of your mesh uh, look smoother uh, what's interesting about it is it's very good for organic shapes because organic shapes typically don't have hard edges however when you're dealing with things like what we're dealing with here that have hard edges uh, the subdivision surface modifier being put onto your mesh requires for certain areas to be set up and certain techniques to be used so that certain areas of your mesh remain sharp while the other areas take on the effect of you know smoothness which is the reason why you put a subdivision surface on in the first place. Uh, so anyway, we can do this fairly easily, right? So long story short, I want this to be smooth because I don't want this, you know, kind of like, you can see it kind of like the edges there. I would like for this to be smooth, for this to be smooth, and for this to be smooth. The rest of this, I would like to be hard. Okay, here's a fairly easy way to do this, and what you do is just press Z, then go to wireframe, then press A to select everything. We're currently on face select, and now what we're going to do is press C, and we're just going to deselect whatever we want to remain, for lack of a better word, softer. So we'll like for this to be as well as this and uh, pretty much that's it everything else as far as I'm concerned can be hard so I am going to right click to get out of paint select okay what we're going to use is something called a mean crease and a mean crease is just an easy way to make things have hard sharp creases if I press the end menu to bring up the properties panel, if I scroll up here, see right here it says mean crease, right? So we can either take up the number here for the mean crease, or we can do it with a shortcut key. Now I like to do it with the shortcut key because Blender's way of adding the mean crease is very nice because you can visually see uh, the mean crease increasing. And what's nice about it is Sometimes you want things to be fully hard as far as hard edges, and sometimes you want them to be partially hard but partially soft, right? So long story short, keep your eyes right here. So the shortcut key is uh, I'm going to hold down shift and press E, then pull. See the number going up? Now I'm going to left click, and now we're at 1 for that mean crease. So that one, think of that 1 as being 100 for the mean crease. So now I'm going to press in to take away the properties panel I'm going to press Z and then go to solid view I'm then going to press A to deselect uh, the 
faces that we previously had selected. Okay, when you look here, you can see these are the options for our mirror modifier. If I click here, I can then um, go to subdivision surface right here and put that on. Uh, that's one way of putting it on. Typically, what I'll do is I'll press A to select everything. I'll hold down control. Then while holding control, I'll press the 2 key on my uh, keyboard. And then uh, you can see this is our subdivision surface uh, options right here. So I'm going to click this to make look it look like it's applied. And then typically what you'll do also is you'll press Z. Uh, what you've seen so far, everything has been shaded flat. And uh, what we want to do, because we have the subdivision surface on, is make things have a shade smooth on them. So we'll click here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is press A to deselect, right? So you see these purple lines right here is showing where our, our mean uh, crease is at. Uh, if by chance you wanted to turn that off, you can press N to bring up the properties panel. You can then scroll down. See where it says creases here? So if I unclick this, the mean creases are still on there, but I can no longer see them. So just so you know about that there. I'm going to choose to leave them off, but just be aware they're on there. So I'm going to press N to take away the properties panel. So I'm going to click here, then go to object mode. Now in object mode, you can see that here it looks soft, right? Even though we have our mean crease on there, these edges right here look soft. As usual, there's multiple ways of uh, dealing with making this... Uh, the card instead of soft. However, we're going to use what's called the edge split modifier. So we're just going to click here and then we're going to click right here where it says edge split. And it, then you can see when I clicked on there, now we have nice uh, sharp edges right here. However, things are soft here as well as here while being hard here and other areas throughout the X. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to click here, go to edit mode. I'm going to hold shift and middle mouse button to pan. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button to rotate. I'm going to put my mouse here. I'm going to hold shift and then press B so I can draw a zoom box to zoom in. I'm then going to go to edge select. I am then going to hold alt, click this edge right here, and then press F to fill that area there. I'm then going to press A to deselect. Okay, I'm now going to hold control, then hold the middle mouse button to zoom back. I'm then going to hold shift as well as the middle mouse button to pan down. I'm then going to click here to go to front view. I am then going to click here to go to object mode. Okay, what I'm going to do now is hold down control and the middle mouse button to zoom back. I'm then going to push this to the side like this. I'm then going to hold down shift and click this layer so we can see that layer as well. Then I'm going to click here then move this to the side like that. I am then going to hold down shift to click this layer. Then I'm going to click this and move this to the side like that. I am then going to hold down shift and then click this layer. So now we can see all the variations of our axes right there. I'm going to then press A to deselect. Okay, I'm now going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan the view. Okay, guys, that's it for the tutorial. For all of those of you out there who like the videos on this channel and reshare them, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And to those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel and you would like to see more, please subscribe. Also, uh, Thomas from uh, Blender Zen, I saw your blog uh, from March uh, 2016 this year. I saw how you honored me. I just want to tell you that uh, I really appreciate what you did. I really appreciate that blog and... Uh, you know, thank you very much for that. Uh, just wanted to give you a, a shout out. And again, uh, thank you, Thomas. I appreciate that. Uh, you guys, if you would like to help to support this channel, help for there to be more tutorials made on a, I guess, even faster <laughs> basis, uh, if you would like, you could give a donation to this channel. Uh, it helps as far as motivation. It helps as far as having time to make more tutorials. So uh, if you want, you can look to the upper right hand corner. If you click on that button, that'll take you to a place where you can 
leave a donation of any amount, uh, which would be greatly appreciated. Um, and as always, guys, thanks for viewing.